Hello, I'm Pastor Jeff from Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. Thanks for joining me for our reading of Luke Acts as our Lenten discipline. So uh, we're going to have a little video introduction to each reading. Uh, this little resource right here is found. You can get a hard copy at church. It came out in the newsletter. Also, you can go online and get a copy of this. And we're going to have some extended reading uh, in both uh, Luke and then Acts. And so the hope is by the time we get to Easter, we will have read through these two books of the Bible. So just a little introduction first. Luke is also the author of Acts. So it's a two-volume set. How do we know this? Because they both uh, begin the same way, dedicated to a Theophilus. Was Theophilus really a true person? Or is Theophilus, which translated means God lover, kind of like Shakespeare's Everyman, meaning that this is a book written for you as well. Scholars are divided and we don't know. When was Luke Acts written? Well, it was written probably after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD by the Romans. But again, that is speculation. And uh, who wrote it? Well, obviously, tradition says Luke, uh, the physician follower of Paul. But again, it's never self-acknowledged in the Bible itself, in Luke and Acts. That is, I, Luke, writing. So it's tradition. Part of the power of that tradition comes from the book of Acts, when the author begins to switch to the uh, first-person plural, giving an eyewitness account. And so that seems to suggest that was someone who was with Paul himself. Well, as we start off today, we uh, begin with Luke 1, uh, 1 through 38. And we're introduced uh, to this idea that the Holy Spirit is at work. The Holy Spirit is coming to people. And the very first ones that we get introduced to is not Mary, but it's Zechariah and Elizabeth. And we're told that they are righteous, they're faithful people. In fact, uh, this is the only woman in the New Testament that is given that um, uh, absolute honor of being said that she is a righteous person. And so Zechariah and Elizabeth are these good, wonderful folks. But in the biblical world, what's missing? They have no child. And this was seen as a contradiction because certainly if God loved them and they were righteous, they would have children. Now we know that's not true, but in the biblical world, that was the mindset. So what happens? Gabriel comes to Zechariah the priest while he's serving in the temple in Jerusalem. And we would think that Zechariah certainly would be overjoyed and recognize what's happening, but he seems to respond with doubt. And so his mouth, uh, he's unable to speak. His mouth is closed, so to speak, uh, until John, the baby John, is born. But then we come to Mary. And Mary is one that we would think, we're not told that she's righteous. We're told that she's favored. But nothing about her character. We think she was young. We think she was a, rather a, a peasant girl, engaged, betrothed to Joseph. She has an encounter with the angel as well. And she doesn't doubt, but believes. And Mary becomes the model for discipleship. So my question for you today is, where have you found yourself in that uh, uh continuum between doubt and belief. Do you find yourself more like Zechariah or like Mary? Think about how the Holy Spirit's coming to you as you read through these pages today. God bless you.